Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video. Today I'm going to be making two Missing You cards. I seem to be making a lot of Missing You cards these days. And I'm going to be painting with Ulta New metallic watercolors. These are absolutely beautiful and I thought these wide open leaves in the leaf canopy set from Ulta New would be perfect for painting. So I'm going to be painting um, both of these sprigs, the smaller one and the larger one, and I'm actually going to stamp each of these twice so that I have four sprigs to color, and then I can divide them between two different cards. I'm starting out with some black watercolor paper, and I have a piece that's already left over from a previous project here, and I've placed that inside my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. And then I'm stamping the large sprig of leaves and the smaller little stem of leaves uh, together. And I'll just stamp these twice. I'm prepping the area with an anti-static powder tool and then stamping these images in Versamark ink. Now I'm using the anti-static powder tool because I'm going to be applying some white embossing powder and the powder can stick to areas where you don't want it. And so putting a little bit of powder down prevents any of those areas from attracting that powder with, you know, by the nature of static cling. So I'm sprinkling on this alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and then tapping off the excess. I then took my heat tool and heat set this until it was smooth and melted. So like I said, I did stamp these twice. So I went ahead and repeated those steps. And now I'm going to be getting into the watercolor painting. These metallic watercolors are absolutely beautiful. And I find the best way to really get them started is to just put a little bit of water in each one of these wells or whichever colors you want to use. And then the, the water will start seeping down into that pan and the color will be ready when you need it. I'm going to do sort of like your transition of color from the very top of the stem of leaves down to the bottom. For this first example, I'm using a gold shade, and then it's going to transition into orange and then red and then just a tiny bit of purple right there at the bottom. So as I was doing this, I was sort of experimenting and trying to figure out the best way to get these colors to mix because they don't naturally want to bleed into each other because they are so opaque. For being a watercolor, metallic paints can be a more heavy than other types of watercolor, which are very fluid and have lots of movement. This type of watercolor is a little bit more opaque and heavy, which is why it looks amazing on black watercolor paper, but that also means you have to manipulate it just a little bit. You'll notice I'm coming back and just using the tip of my brush and just dabbing that area where the colors um, are transitioning into each other, where they're blending. I'm using my paintbrush to sort of massage that area, coax th those colors to mix, and I found that that was the best way to get these colors mixing. So as I'm moving toward the bottom of the stem of leaves, I'm changing how much of each color I'm applying to the leaves. Near here at the top, I want mostly gold going a little bit into that orange. But then as I move into different areas, I'm going to want more of the orange and have that transition into a red shade. So this is really fun because you get to use a lot of different colors and really see how they mix. So you see I've gone from orange to red, and now for these last few leaves at the very bottom, I'm putting mostly red and dabbing in just a tiny bit of purple. And this almost gives it a, an iridescent look or makes it look like the color is shifting in the light when really I've just painted the different colors. For this other uh, set of leaves, I want this one to go from gold to green with a little bit of blue. And I really love this transition in particular. I think some of them work better than others. And I love this green shade. Um, that gold and green just play off each other so beautifully. And I really, really love that. So as I move to the other end of the stem of leaves, uh, like I did on the previous stem, I'm using more of the next color in this case, which is green, and then adding a little bit of the next color, which in this case is blue. So I've got a little bit of that transition from gold to green to blue. And then I'm going to show you this next 
set of leaves. Now this one really stepped things up, um, going from blue to purple. And I really love this transition. In fact, I kind of love all of them. I really should stop saying I love one in particular because I really love how all of them turned out. So I painted this over the course of about an hour and I just turned on some music. Um, at one point I had my laptop open next to me and I was talking with a friend on Zoom. So it's just a fun way to um, pass the time because this is a little bit of mindless painting because you have that heat emboss line, which the heat embossing powder sort of creates a barrier so you don't have to be super careful when you're painting each leaf shape. The heat, emb the heat embossing powder really um, is your friend in this case and it holds that paint into that center area. For this last set of leaves I went from red to purple and then, an, an, and then eventually I transitioned from red to blue. I liked that, um, that change in color. So here's what they all look like when I'm finished. I love how those turned out. There's such a brightness and vibrancy to all of these paints. So I'm gonna take the coordinating dies that go with the leaf canopy set, and I'm gonna place these over the top and I'll just run these through my die cutting machine. Now, this black watercolor paper is very fragile, so um, anywhere where you apply tape, it will tear. So as I'm putting these, this tape down to hold the dies, I'm making sure that the tape is mostly just on the die itself and on the paper outside of the leaf area. So I can just pop these out as soon as they're through my die cutting machine. And I think these turned out so beautiful. They look professional, like metallic printed images that have been die cut. I think it looks just so pretty. And I love the transition of color. So I ran the dies through my die cutting machine on the other two stems as well. And these turned out just as beautiful. I love how that turned out. The sheen on this is absolutely amazing. So now I'm going to start assembling my cards and I kind of thought maybe I'd put them all on one card at one point using a sentiment from the heartfelt sentiment stamp set from Elta New. And then I eventually decided to split it into two cards, cut my black paper a little bit smaller. So it's five and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I could have two cards. So I'm positioning where I want those leaves to be eventually and I'm also positioning my stamp where I want it. And then I'm going to remove those leaves so that I can just stamp down onto this black cardstock. This cardstock is pitch black cardstock from Hero Arts. Prepping the area with an anti-static pattern tool just like I did before, and then stamping my greeting in Versamark ink. So I'm going to do this stamping and applying the white heat embossing powder to two separate pieces of black cardstock. These cards are going to be exact duplicates of each other. Um, the main difference will just be they have different colors on the leaves on each card. So I just cut more cardstock and left that stamp in my Misty so I could stamp a second piece. My card bases are made out of Summit Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And these are five by seven cards or A7 cards. I positioned the leaves over the center areas. And then I took some foam tape and trimmed it down into small squares, small enough that the squares could go behind the leaf shapes on the images. I applied a bunch of those little tiny squares, removed the release paper on the back, and then positioned it over my black cardstock. And I first positioned the large stem, and then I applied the, the small square foam pieces to the smaller stem. And I just uh, slid that behind the bigger stem until it was positioned just exactly where I wanted it. After I had one card completed and pressed those areas down so that they adhered to the black cardstock, I then moved on to the second card and did the same exact steps cutting more foam squares and applying them to the back of the foam pieces. At this point, I thought the cards might be done, but they seemed a little bit unbalanced, like that the two sprigs of leaves, the two stems of leaves were just super heavy and they were going to fall over on themselves. And so they needed something to anchor them. This is like 
how I look at things design wise. I just look at them emotional. I'm like, that looks like it's going to tip over. So I just added some dashed lines with a white jelly roll pen. And that seemed to sort of give it a little more weight and anchor the card. So those are the two cards today. Just a reminder that all of the supplies I use today are listed down below in the video description. And thank you so much for joining me today. I will be back next week with more card videos. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.